Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ryan and I'm the content creator behind Revive by Ryan. On my channel, I wanna show you that you don't need a lot of money or experience to make money flipping furniture. On my videos, I'll be sharing my experiences of picking up cheap, worn out pieces of furniture, restyling it and selling it for a profit on Facebook Marketplace. On today's video, I'll be taking this old student pine desk and transforming it into this sleek, modern student desk. So sit back and enjoy. I picked this old pine desk up from Facebook Marketplace for just £10. It had the usual knocks and dents but overall it was in amazing condition. As always I begin by hoovering the entire piece. This is to pick up any dust balls, cobwebs or just about any debris left inside. Honestly, the things I've found in some furniture is absolutely crazy. If you enjoy this style of furniture makeovers, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the post notifications bell down below. On to removing the hardware. These door pulls have a screw on the inside and have a wooden dial attached on the outside so tap in lightly with a rubber mallet and it comes loose and comes right off. Next up was the cleaning. I'm using Method's multi-purpose degreaser with the rough side of a sponge and scrub the entire piece. It's vital that you scrub it down properly as you don't want any dirt or grease left on your piece as it may affect the final paint job. As you can see there was quite a few bumps and dents that I had to fill in with wood filler. To fix those bumps and dents I am using Ron Seal's high performance wood filler but any wood filler at all would do. I decided I was going with a different style of hardware so I filled a hole from the previous hardware. I simply used a wooden screw to push the filler down into the entire hole. I then moved on to the top to make sure it was free of any dents. I tend to leave a little excess of the filler as it can shrink. Next up was the sanding. I sanded the top with an 80 grit sandpaper. This is to get down to the bare wood. And of course, don't forget to wear a respirator. I then followed it up by sanding the entire piece with a 120 grit sandpaper. This is to scuff sand the body so the paint has a surface to stick to. To get into those areas that my orbital sander can't reach I use a 120 grit sandpaper. Next was to clean down the entire piece to remove any sawdust. Starting with hoovering and then following it up with a damp cloth to pick up anything the hoover didn't pick up. And remember, you can substitute the tools I use in my videos, for example the drill for a screwdriver, the orbital sander for a hand sander, I just use these tools as it speeds up the process of flipping furniture. 
To protect the inside of the drawers and the inside of the body, I'm using this masking tape with clear sheet attachment. I then secure the clear sheet at the bottom with some masking tape. When staining bare pine, it can turn out very blotchy. To stop this, I use a stain sealer. This prevents the natural oils of the wood seeping through and ruining your stain finish. One light coat is just enough to do the trick. It's then time to prime. I use Zinsser's Bin Shellac Primer. The coverage is great and I've never had issues with the wood tannins leaking through. This primer can be very messy so I wrap my paint tray in tin foil so when I'm finished I can dump the tin foil and the paint tray is still as good as new. Spending money on new paint trays and an extra 30 minutes cleaning up is a big no for me. Any tools I use in this video I'll also link in the description down below. As you can see, I'm priming the inside section that you'll be able to see. This will make the final result look that much better. To stain the top, I'm using Ron Seal's Dark Oak Wood Stain. Remember to pour it into a separate container so you don't contaminate or get anything into your tin. One light coat of this wood stain going from side to side, then one long swoop to ensure it's perfectly even is enough. Following the instructions there was no need to wipe it down as there was no excess. Once the top had dried, I then sanded the primed area with a super fine 220 grit sanding sponge. This ensures the surface will be super smooth when finished. And don't forget to wipe away any dust. It was then time to cover the top. It's important to protect it from any overspray while painting. It's important to take the time doing this and it's worth it to get it right. As you can see, those lines are perfect. To paint the body, I'm using Johnson's Dusty Morning Grey mixed with Hemway's Black Matte to get my desired charcoal finish. I first spray a piece of cardboard to ensure the paint is being sprayed at a nice steady flow. To get the right consistency, I mix this chalk paint with about 10% water to thin it slightly. After giving the first coat two hours to dry thoroughly, I then sprayed my second coat. Spraying that inside area that you can see gives it a more professional finish I think. I tend to always spray my pieces although you can get the exact same result by using a brush and sanding after every coat with a 220 grit sandpaper. 
I then gave the second coat two full hours to dry. It was then time to remove the painter's tape. Seeing those nice finished lines make that prep so worth it. If you'd like to see what I have in my upcoming videos, check out my Instagram at Revived by Ryan as I regularly post there before I post a video up. To protect the piece, I'm using Rust Oleum's Chalky Finish Lacquer. This is a clear matte finish. Remember when spraying your final piece with your top coat. Don't spray in the same spot for too long as it can leave a shiny finish which you do not want on your flat matte finish. To install my hardware I use my very simplistic method. I measure the width of my drawer and the width of the hardware so I can find the exact middle of the drawer. I then apply masking tape to either side of the hardware. This now gives me the exact place for my hardware. Using a pencil, I mark where I have to drill my hardware holes. Next, I use a countersink bit to indent the hole. I then follow that up with a 1.5mm drill bit. This will ensure my hardware screw is perfectly straight. Now that I have my guide holes, I then screw in the hardware. This is a tried and tested method that I've always used and it has always worked for me. So hopefully it works for you too. So this is how it looked before. And this is the final result. Thanks for watching today's video guys, let me know in the comments what you think of today's transformation. Also, if you love today's makeover, drop me a like down below and as always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.